two on the trot. Scottish Brewery again, it's Drygate. Drygate Brewery is based in Glasgow and they started in 2014. The brewery gets its name from being based at 85 Drygate. The building was built in 1964 as a box factory and prior to becoming the brewery was a bottom plant and a storage unit for tenants. Tenants, for those who are unaware, could be considered the national alcohol beverage of Scotland, much like Iron Brew is the soft drink associated with Scotland. Um, tenants Brewery are not surprisingly metres away from Drygate. The reason why all becomes clear when I say that Drygate is actually a joint venture launched between CNC, the owners of Tenants, and William Bross Brewing Company, who are based in Alloa, who are a family owned business. But in terms of output, I believe are only second in capacity in Scotland, with Brewdog being top dog. So, Drygate uses a state of the art 26.5 hectolitre brewing house, along with a smaller 250 litre brew kit, which they call the studio. In their first year, they were looking to brew 1 million litres of beer. One of the first beers produced was Bareface. Um, so I'm going to crack this one open and um, just have a taste of it to see what it's like. This is a lager in a 440ml can nonetheless. And this will be my first 440ml can, I think, from a uh, dry gate. <laughs> Let's pour this in. Appropriate glassware this time, nucleated base to help bring the small bubbles up on this lager. Let's have a nose. All right, um, I'm not sure if I'm expecting, there must be hops or something in this, not sure, not had it before. All right, let's try. Yeah, there's some hops in there. Um, it's still a lager, but yeah, there's some nice hops in there. Um, just reading the back of this quickly, it's like, why Bareface simply confessed brazenly slew our favorite parts from some of the best lager styles out there and combined them with something sharper than the average beer. There you go, so Bareface lies or cheats, yeah. Um, yeah, the reason why I've said the things the way I have is that um, if people were to look at Untapped and check out Drygate, it just states microbrewery and it gives no reference to its owners. However, you know, this is a new brewery or young brewery with large brewing capacity that's been set up by two large breweries. Um, I'd just like to note that obviously Rate Beer correctly identifies the parent owners of the company. Um, this fact though shouldn't dissuade mine or your opinion of their beers as all that matters is the brewer's ability to make a decent or even amazing beer. Um, I understand though that um, upon setting up anyways, people in Glasgow where they're based were obviously skeptical going, tenants, craft beer, what's that all about? So you can see where, you know, the idea comes from being about skeptical. Um, so from what I've read, it was William Bross themselves that approached tenants with the idea of a craft brewery in the middle of the city. Now CNC were wanting to get into the craft market and by teaming up with a brewery such as William Bross, this made it easier for them. So the company is split with 49% of the shares owned by tenants, 40% with William Bross and the remaining 11% held by staff. The idea behind this being that no one company is in control and the brewery is more able to make independent decisions. I can see it could work. Uh, the brewery opened its own tap room in 2015 and the focus in here was based around the industrial history of Glasgow's East End while showcasing local art and design. The brewery still seems to this day to very much dabble in supporting the arts and design. Um, and strangely, it seems that their first brew 
wasn't completed until two weeks after the tap room opened in June 2015, the first brew was. So does that mean the tap room was not selling their own beer, even though they had all their own brewing equipment behind? I'd be a bit upset if I went to um, a tap room just after it opened and they said, oh no, two more weeks till our beer's ready. Anyway, so tap room does seem to support local breweries from all over the UK alongside selling their own beers. Um, one of their original aims was to reach out to the craft community and distance the business from the tenant's name. And the way they were going to do that was to offer their studio brew plant to novice brewers, aka, you know, home brewers. However, that's quite a big step up to go from home brewing to the 150 litre brew. Um, so they ended up in 2016 installing some 50 litre Brautmeisters uh, for home brewers to come and use and then hopefully, you know, step up from 50 to 150 litres. They do state that their studio kit has helped launch a few startup breweries, uh, but also serves as a useful pilot brewery for themselves for small batches of new recipes. Um, they certainly seem to be outputting beer, beer is like a craft brewery with over 200 beers to their name in just six years. That is a high number. I must admit, the first time I seen Drygate was their disco forklift truck uh, just over there um, from Sainsbury's back in 2018. And when I placed my order with them, I seen that they done the disco forklift truck, but they also done a double disco. And do you know, what better lead in than that to crack open the beer? Let me have another sip of this. I'm going to crack open, I'll put that behind actually there, the double disco. So mango smoothie IPA, seven and a half percent in a 440 mil can, which I find hilarious that the original one, that was noisy opening. The original one comes in a 330 mil can at 5.1, um, but then different markets are aiming for. All right. Oh, that smells good already. All right. Let's pour this carefully, not to get too much head. And I will precariously put it on top of that one. I've just seeing the words vegan friendly on it. So it's vegan friendly. There we go. It's hazy. A lot of carbonation inside because of the nucleated glass. Small tight head bubbles. Smells mangoey and yeah, it's got that. If you've heard of smoothies, like an innocent smoothie at that stage, not sponsored. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. All hard feelings gone at this stage. I didn't, I thought the disco forklift truck was okay, but double it up and it's much, much better. Oh wow. That is nice. Yeah, I can, f I think I feel the booze as well on that. I think I feel the booze coming through, but it's hard to tell with the smoothie flavor, the mango, the citrus notes. Oh, that is, that is nice. Um, yeah, that's a good beer. <laughs> uh, in 2019, the brewery underwent a rebrand alongside refocusing of their beers. Um, this seen the most sort of popular beers from their studio range, i.e. the pilot brewery brought into the main range. They also, um, reduced the ABV on some of their beers, namely, I believe the seven peaks, but I do wonder that's now, uh, it's dropped from five to 3.9 to make it a, it was session IPA, but now they've dropped it 3.9 to make it a session IPA. But I wonder, was that just so they could do a. 14 peaks as a double because if that was five and they doubled it to 10, they've had a bit of issue there at that stage. 
Um, they also launched some more low ABV beers, you know, the half percenters and some gluten free beers and obviously vegan friendly as well, um, following, you know, just market trends in general. Sort of brings us up to date because I said they're, they're, they're a young brewery, they're young and um, I only got these beers from a few days ago. I did leave D a bit late to, to work out what I was going to do. So I, I decided to go with Drygate because I was like, oh, we've got some beers that I fancy the look of here. So look, yeah, let's let's touch on what is considered their core beers right now after that um, relaunch in a sense in 2019. So we have um, the uh, Disco Forklift Truck, which is a 5.1% uh, smoothie, American Pale Ale, I believe it's supposed to be. We've got Glad Eye IPA at the end here, which is a 5.2% IPA. Above that, I've got Crossing the Rubicon at 6.9% and it's American IPA. 6.9 is always, you see that in the shops, kind of a good deal always for that. Uh, we've also got, uh, I'm going to, Orinoco, a 6% um, milk stout. And they've also got one called uh, Chimera, which is a 5.9% in Impale Ale. We've got obviously Bareface, the 4.4% Lager. Yeah, double checking I read that right. And then Seven Peaks there, 3.9% reformulated Session IPA. Um, like other craft breweries, they do themed beers or beer series. And um, from that, I've got some here. So I have what is their dessert series. Now this one isn't part of the dessert series. This is just the um, oh, Orinchino or, or yeah, Orinchino, I'm going to call it Orinoco, Orinoco, I don't know, but it's hazelnut. So that's milk and this is with hazelnut, but they have their dessert series, which sounds interesting. I'm interested to see what they're like. So this is the Christmas dessert menu Christmas pudding. It's a brown ale at seven and a half percent. Oh, it says uh, the dessert menu series bridges the gap between food and drink. These beers are designed to emulate flavors of desserts they say they take their inspiration from. So this is full body Christmas pudding ale. And then we have sticky toffee pudding. It's a Belgium quad with fruits and spices coming in at 12%. That sounds really nice. It's a Belgian quad immediately. Um, that may be the best sticky toffee pudding going if it matches my expectations on the quad. Unfortunately, when I put my expectations up that high, uh, it may, may fail. Um, this is just a Rattler, um, very hazy. Um, yeah, raspberry lemonade, lemon lager blended with pink lemonade. It was. <laughs> why not get it I thought and then these two these two are the interesting two I didn't bring it down because um, I've got a glass uh, that came with this and um, obviously that glass you know sort of is for these I didn't want to bring it on camera but yeah these look really nice we've got the Bruce it's just like the bottle style that I like and yeah it looks really nice and this is a single hopped bock and then we have Betty, which again is a single hopped bock, but they're different uh, variants or styles. So bock beers from a craft brewery, that's kind of nice always to see, both at 6.3% and I've got the glass that goes with it, which is quite nice. Um, and I was just gonna show you like top of their lab um, label, this is bottle cap and that's sort of what they've got their brand in on all of their cans as well that sort of wavy line is the dry gate um logo or series i guess right let's have a bit more of this that is nice that is nice oh dear that is good <laughs> um so yeah i'm interested in the two box but that is good and i think the desserts will be good as well Let's touch awards. Um, so awards wise, they've won awards at SEBA and Scottish SEBA. I think that means like SEBA, Scotland region. Um, so in 2018, they won five golds at the SEBA Scotland event, but they were all related to, you know, small pack beers, whatever that sort of means. It's sort of like, I thought, Beer awards are normally based on the fact that 
you know, you can get can, you can get bottle, you can get cask, you can get keg. Um, but I'm a bit confused when you turn around and go, well, we're just going to do a group for those that sell their beers in four packs. What difference does it make if the beers are four pack versus a single can or a 12 pack? I'm confused by that, but yeah, they've won that. And then they also won some awards in 2016. I sound really skeptical this whole episode, don't I? I look, not the biggest fan of some of the beers. So the beers that they've actually done in supermarkets, um, I mean, like the crossing the Rubicon for, for the ABV that it is and the price, it's a bargain. Um, but I wasn't a huge fan. Uh, I don't think it was amazing. The uh, Disco, um, the original, not the Double, Double tastes amazing. And I had another one there as well that I didn't think that was that great. And I can't remember the name of it. But the Double is really good. I like that. It's smooth. That is beautiful. The lager was, it's, it's oh, slightly hoppy lager. The funny thing about it, going back to it after drinking that, it just tastes like a very plain lager. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to have to be careful. I'll probably have to drink all of that before I move on to this. But yeah, there we go. This is Drygate Brewery. Um, I say some interesting beers here and uh, some of their standard ones over here, plus some of the doubles. This is Drygate Brewery. This has been the UK Brewery Project. I'll see you next time, guys. Until then, take care.